Hey everyone, this is Pastor Mike. Welcome to our midweek Lenten service for this week. Again, amidst all of our viral concerns, we are doing it via the web. So thank you for joining us when you are able to. Hopefully, if you want to have a bulletin, you've been able to either print one off or have one digitally to follow along. Uh, but before we begin, a couple things. Just a reminder again, all the stuff here at church is on hiatus until it is safe to resume activities. Uh, we are not, uh, again, overreacting to things. We are just trying to stay the course as what is safe. Um, but even amidst all of these things, just a reminder. Uh, this is not the first nor last time as a country, as a world, we have had issues like these. And a reminder, the good Lord has seen us through those before, and he will do so again. Um, and moving forward, even as we do this uh, service here, uh, kind of in my office, we are uh, planning on moving to uh, a different venue for these things uh, with maybe a little bit more uh, amidst the services as we continue to adjust and move and find out what works best for us in this place. So keep your eyes open. Uh, again, questions, let us know. Please communicate just as we're trying to communicate to you. Uh, for most people, there's a big learning curve here and we're all trying to figure out what makes sense. So uh, extend others grace uh, and also be willing to accept grace and give grace to yourself amidst these things. I think especially nowadays, grace will uh, carry us through, especially the grace of God. Now then, let us take a brief moment together, hearts and minds for worship. Now long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways, by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. Now he is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. Since we have confidence by the new and living way opened for us by Jesus, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Journey with us, O holy God, as we continue our way to the cross. Sharpen our focus, that our attention may center more on you than ourselves. Lead us through the shadows of darkness and prepare our hearts that we might be a people of prayer ready to perceive and respond to your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now, our reading for uh, today, this Wednesday, is again from Hebrews. Uh, hopefully, as you remember, our readings have been moving through the 11th chapter of Hebrews, looking at kind of these heroes of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now by faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse he suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt for his looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger, for he per persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, so the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now we had had our first two gatherings in person with soup, but this third is a bit different, but we continue with these heroes of the faith. Uh, this hero, this uh, guide, this example for our Lenten journey is Moses. Uh, this Hebrews verses gives the highlights, the pieces that are important, even with his birth. Uh, around that time, Pharaoh had put an edict that all the, the male children born should be killed by the nursemaids, by the midwives and by our parents themselves. But many refused that command, and one of them was Moses' parents, where they hid him. And eventually they opted to put him in a basket in the river, if you remember that. And Pharaoh's own daughter discovered him and kept him as her own, making him in many ways a prince of Egypt. 
and throughout his life he grew up in wealth, but knew that he was an Israelite. Now it came to pass that through uh, some conflict, some strife, he had to flee through freely, excuse me, from Egypt, and he settled and he was married, and eventually found the burning bush. And he discovered again the faith of his ancestors, the faith in the living God through the burning bush. And he became a prophet, a reluctant prophet. Never get that wrong. And that's maybe an important thing to remember, reluctance. Moses was very reluctant from the get-go to do what he needed to do. He fought God at the burning bush. But he went, and he struggled with Pharaoh, and he brought plagues, and he worked with his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam. And eventually he saw the Israelites through those plagues until it finally came to the very last and worst plague, the death of the firstborn. And as the Hebrews reminds us, uh, people gathered in their homes. They put the blood of the lamb, shared in the meal, and by doing that, gathering the angel of death passed over their homes and did not touch them. And even in that moment, Pharaoh relented and let the people go. Because again, remember, that is why the plagues were there. That was a struggle. They were slaves. And God wanted to set them free. But Pharaoh resisted. And it was not until that horrendous, horrendous push that he finally relented. But even after that, as the people were leaving, hoping to start a new life, finally free from that horrible situation they were in, Pharaoh came after them with armies and soldiers and chariots. And something even more amazing happened in that moment. Is that to flee, they were caught by the Red Sea. And there was no way of going around it either way. They had no way of going over. And they couldn't go back. So God opened a way through what their problem was. And they walked on dry land to the other side and began their life. Now this is the faith here. What is the faith of Moses? What is the example in all of these pieces? Honestly, I think it is the trust while going through the hard things. We had difficult decisions last week. This is, even sometimes things aren't our decisions. Again, Moses was reluctant. He didn't want to do this. He didn't want to have to be this guy. Have somebody else go, Lord. My brother Aaron, he talks better than I do. I don't speak well. But again, God called Moses reluctant. And throughout it all, he had to go through hard things. He had to go through the court of the Pharaoh, which was hard. He had to go through the plagues, which was hard. He had to lead people through the plague, where they had to hunker down in their homes so that the angel of death would pass over them. He had to teach them the meal so they could mark their doorposts so that they would be able to weather that storm. They had to pass through that plague. He didn't pull the people out before the plague came. He protected them through it. And again, even as they were fleeing, God did not exempt them from that struggle. God saw them through the sea. And it is an important faith, and maybe especially in these 40 days, as we find ourselves in an interesting time. It is the faith, the grounding faith to see through troubles. That might be the best faith and guide at this time. Because, let's be honest, there are probably hiccups in our homes and our lives right now we were not expecting. And we can't run from them when we have to in some way stay home. We have to pass through them to the other side. And like God did with the Israelites and with Moses, we can trust that the good Lord will see us through. He won't make us exempt. Faith here carries us through the hard, through the difficult, through the struggles. And that is what I want you to see, brothers and sisters, more so than anything else. The examples that we will see for this text are not long ago in many and various ways, but they are maybe those around us. 
maybe it is the uh, doctor right now that is uh, working those extra shifts. Maybe it's the truck driver that keeps on bringing those supplies in. Maybe it's the teacher day in and day out. Maybe it's your spouse who's home right now trying to all of a sudden become an educator. And I dare say not a homeschooler, but maybe a crisis schooler. Uh, again, it will not be easy. It will not be pretty. But the good Lord will see us through as he has done before. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Faithful God, shower the world with your loving kindness, that all may know your peace. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors, that all may know your love. Comfort the sick and the dying, that all may know your mercy. Guide our leaders in the ways of truth, that all may know your justice. Focus our hearts on the way of the cross, that all may have faith on you. And finally, let us pray in the words of Martin Luther. Behold, Lord, an empty vessel that needs to be filled. My Lord, fill it. I am weak in the faith. Strengthen me. I am cold in love. Warm me and make me fervent, that my love may go out to my neighbor. I do not have a strong and firm faith. At times I doubt and am unable to trust you altogether. O oh Lord, help me. Strengthen my faith and trust in you. In you I have sealed the treasure of all I have. I am poor. You are rich and came to be merciful to the poor. I am a sinner. You are upright. With me there is an abundance of sin. In you is the fullness of righteousness. Therefore, I will remain with you, with whom I can receive, but whom I may not give. Amen. Let us pray together a prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Blessing brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, hopefully this service finds you well. Hopefully it was able to give you a, a bit of worship amidst these times. Again, keep looking for the passages every morning to ground yourself in a new day. Uh, keep praying for those in need. And if you need anything, let me know. Blessings, and we'll see you soon.